What's going on guys? Goji Man recently posted a video why only a vegan diet can heal the gut and literally everything he said in this video was incorrect. So I, I figured I had to kind of make this. Hashtag Ask Goji Man, what's the best diet for healing the gut? All these ex-vegans are making me think that I should try a high meat diet to fix my health issues. What are your thoughts on this? So one thing I need to say here is people in the raw primal community might be thinking high meat is rotten meat. But in this context, he actually means just a diet that's high in meat. And him saying that without differentiating this indicates to me that he's not too familiar with the carnivore diet in general. Great question. Let's get to it. Roll the titles. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you. Welcome back. It's good to see you all again. If you haven't met before, then hi, I'm Goji Man. I'm currently finishing a master's in nutrition and qualifying as a nutritionist. And next year, I'll be studying for a PhD in nutritional science. I do plant-based nutrition videos every other day. In which you know, I could literally say that if I took a nutrition class in my community college. Which answer your health questions under the hashtag Ask Goji Man. So if you have a question for me, then hashtag Ask Goji Man in the comments below. Or alternatively, you can send your video questions through to contact at gojimannutrition.com. Now, I think it's fairly obvious to most that your health is massively dictated by your gut health and your gut health is massively dictated by what you eat and expose your body to in terms of chemicals and toxins. I mean, I would agree with that if you're talking about people that actually actively search nutrition and stuff. I think most people in the world might agree that what you eat is important for your health, but not really the average person would not understand gut health importance. I don't think they would. And it will also be of no surprise to many of you that your gut bacteria predominantly operate and run on fiber from the... Did he copy my hair? Like his hair, I know his hair has looked similar to mine in the past few videos, but it's getting closer and closer to my hair. Food that you eat. So your gut bacteria ferment non-digestible substrates or what's called soluble fiber or resistant starch and convert this into short chain fatty acids, the main three being acetate, propionate and butyrate. So butyrate is the main energy source for colonocytes, which are cells in your colon. And it's also a substance that prevents gut dysbiosis. And gut dysbiosis simply means too much bad bacteria and not enough good bacteria. And I'll explain the importance of this later in the video. Now, the two other main short chain fatty acids produced by the fiber that you eat are propionate that is moved to the liver to help with things like regulating satiety and also acetate, which is a fuel source for other essential bacteria in the gut. And it also plays an essential role in lipogenesis, which essentially means the formation of fat. Now you can obviously get both good and bad bacteria in the gut and you can think of good bacteria as anti-inflammatory and dysbiosis or bad bacteria as inflammatory in the gut. So if you want great health then obviously you need to start with no inflammation in the gut so it can heal and operate optimally. So we know that the gut bacteria feed on fiber which is really important for creating those short chain fatty acids, for regulating hunger, for boosting your immunity and also in the creation of your neurotransmitters and all of that other good stuff. So he pretty much summarized that these short chain fatty acids that are fermented by gut bacteria because of fiber are the reason we're healthy, but the best source of those fatty acids is actually meat. Uh, so I don't understand why he's using that argument. That's kind of contradictory to his point.
Okay, okay, I really don't... I can't find out how much butyrate is in butter. So I can't actually find out how much butyrate is in butter for, versus plant foods, but the whole reason he's contradicting himself here is because the best source of butyrate and these other short-chain fatty acids is meat and animal foods, and he's saying that those are the main important thing in gut health, so I should kind of stop this video here. But one thing I should also mention is gorillas can turn these fats and they can ferment uh one thing i should also mention is that gorillas so i can't find out how much butyrate is actually in butter versus how much your gut ferments from x amount of food but what i can say is the short chain fatty acids and especially butyrate which he's saying there's it's very important for gut health in general the best source of these is animal foods meat and fat so he's kind of contradicting himself here and not only that even though the humans can turn fiber into short chain fatty acids through gut fermentation, they can't turn MCT as well as the longer chain fatty acids uh, from fiber. They can't make that. Gorillas can, and a lot of other ruminant animals can, but humans don't have that ability. So I think that's something worth mentioning here, that although we can get optimal amounts of short chain fatty acids, or maybe not optimal, but although we can get short chain fatty acids from fiber, we can't get the other ones from fiber. And that's very evident in every other animal that subsists on a plant-based diet. Now, as I've said repeatedly on this channel, if you have a lot of bad bacteria, SIBO, Candida, or other gut problems, then the foods that you're eating won't be broken down properly, and the bad bacteria will burrow into your gut lining, creating holes and allow undigested food particles and toxins into your bloodstream. And the resultant inflammation in the gut will be compounded by compounds such as oxalates, salicylates, and histamines, etc., that will cause all manner of issues and health problems. And remember that these gut issues are a result of antibiotic use, poor diets, pesticides, and even stress. So it's not that the food is necessarily a problem, it's that your body doesn't have the right tools to break down everything correctly. Now, very soon on this channel, I will take people in with these gut and health problems, do the testing on them, and then reverse their issues so that you can all see this process. Because when you rebalance your gut flora in the right way, when you feed the gut by giving it the nutrients that it needs, all of these other health issues driven by the gut will subside. Now on this point, if you have gut and digestive issues and other health issues, and you want me to do testing on you and help you reverse your health issues, then drop me an email at contact at gojimannutrition.com. These consults will start early next year when I have finished my masters. And all of these tests will be funded by my Patreon account, which I will link in the description below. And just to state again, the Patreon account has been set up so I can take five people a month, test their gut health, etc., and then help them reverse their health issues. I will receive no money whatsoever from this account. So if you want to support this channel and these people in getting their health back, then click on the link below. Now, as per the title of this video, let me explain why the vegan diet is the only diet capable of fixing the underlying gut issues and what happens in the gut when you try and fix these issues by going high meat or meat only in your diet. So let's start with the meat issue. So if you have gut issues like vegetable police and many of those ex-vegans, if you do go carnivore or high meat with only minimal fiber, this is what will happen. At first, you will probably get a massive reduction in your symptoms. You will initially feel great. And then after a period of time, your gut flora will start being dominated by species like bilophilia. So bilophilia has only been studied in rats and rodents. So that's not really relevant in the context of this discussion. And honestly, there's not too much information out there on bilophilia. So for him to make a statement saying that bilophilia is the main negative reason of a carnivore diet has no merit to it. Which is highly inflammatory. And as a result, other species and strains like lactobacillus won't be prevalent enough in the guts to properly regulate things like histamine. So then after a period of time, your body will then start reacting to the meat as your body won't be breaking it down correctly. And then you are really in trouble because you will have no safe foods to eat and you will react to everything that you eat. So now you are in a situation where you have lots of inflammatory bacteria in your gut you are eating high amounts of meat and fat, and then the bacteria you do have in your gut are taking nutrients from the meat, dairy, and eggs, such as choline and carnitine, and converting this into inflammatory compounds such as ammonia and trimethylamine oxide, or TMAO. So you can't say that TMAO is inflammatory because there's a red herring where fish is the highest food in TMAO, but when fish is consumed, 
the, these inflammatory problems are not seen. So TMAO is out. And in regards to, what did he say? The ammonia? Ammonia is product, produced by just fermentation of amino acids. Ammonia is a product of any digestion, whether you're a vegan or a carnivore. And even if it's higher in carnivores, it's, it's a process that's regulated by the liver and the kidneys. Your body is meant to produce urea and excrete it. And if you want to avoid cancer, heart disease, and all of those other nasties, then ammonia and TMAO are not things that you want in your body in any great amount. Now, if you've gone high meat or carnivore because of health and digestive issues on a vegan diet, and you don't believe what I am saying, take a Lipocalin 2 test and measure the amount of inflammation in your gut. So people like vegetable police get a massive reduction in their symptoms, and then the gut flora changes to the inflammatory species, then the inflammation really starts skyrocketing, and then you start struggling with histamines, etc. So the whole problem I have here is that he's basing these very blanket statements off of insignificant findings. And not only that, he's incorrect on a lot of things. He's saying that histamines are an issue. And the only reason he's probably saying histamines are an issue is because I probably told him about them inadvertently through my video on histamines a couple of videos ago. And histamine intolerance has to do a lot with gut health in general. And some people are very sensitive to histamines. And more often than not, histamines come up on non-carnivore diets more so than carnivore diets. So as with vegetable police, you will start getting skin issues and like some other well-known carnivore diets, you will start developing histamine type issues. So check out my histamine video if you guys haven't because that's a very interesting topic and a very complex topic that he's kind of just lumping into a 30 second summary. One thing I do find funny though is he keeps saying the word high meat diet. Ironically, in the context of the primal diet, the rotten meat is called high meat and using that would actually probably heal the gut for a lot of people. A lot of people on the raw primal diet talk about the health benefits of eating rotten meat. And he's like saying it every like few few minutes. Then the issues will simply get worse and worse over time. Now the only way you can heal the gut properly is to get rid of the bad bacteria, heal the gut, feed the gut the right nutrients, so fiber, so they can produce those essential short chain of fatty acids, so the inflammation comes down and your immune system starts firing properly. Or you could eat butter, which has probably multiple amounts of those short chain fatty acids. Wouldn't that reduce inflammation more? I promise you all that these carnivore dieters, etc., who had gut and health issues on a vegan diet, well, this was simply caused by bad bacteria and SIBO, etc. And all of these people have gone from diet to diet to diet, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And then they find the carnivore diet that almost immediately halts their symptoms. So then they run to social media screaming that the vegan diet ruined their health and the carnivore diet is the savior. But I promise you this, give it six months and watch how many of those ex-veganers and carnivore dieters start running into worse health problems. And the reason for this is that they never fix the underlying gut issues. They are simply managing their symptoms temporary with diet. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, if you have a question for me, then hashtag ask Man in the comments. All right, so. How do you guys like my makeup today, huh? <laughs> Holy shit, this lighting is good. Um, so it takes, so six years is a short period of time on a carnivore diet for me to get various histamine. And I've had histamine problems in the past too. I just didn't realize them. But histamine intolerance is in a fairly small percentage of the population in general. And it's not something we really see a lot on a carnivore diet. And that's also has to do with just how old our meat is now and how we're not a lot in, especially in America, our meat is very, very, very aged and old in comparison to some other places. So I guess overall to sum this up, you know, he contradicted himself saying that these short chain fatty acids are so good for you, yet the best source of them is animal foods. He talked about TMAO and ammonia when those are, well, TMAO is a red herring and ammonia doesn't matter in the context of human metabolic function. Like it's a result of any digestion, regardless of whether you're a carnivore or not. It just you know, contradicting himself, and then he brought up histamines, but I don't think he really understands histamines or histamine intolerance and how that's actually an issue related to your gut not producing enough of an enzyme. It's not actually to do with the histamines in the food, or, you know, it's, it doesn't matter whether or not you're a carnivore or a vegan. If you have a histamine intolerance, 
you can't consume his high histamine foods or high histamine stimulating food. So hopefully this was pretty clear for you guys. I just thought this was glaringly misleading as a video.